Hello, in this video I'd like to show you a basic setup of an alarm or an alert viewer in Procon Web HMI visualization software from Vibe Muller. So I will create a new project. I'm going to use the target type, type HMI SCADA, which basically means the project will live up my, on my PC and will be streamed to a browser. So I'm going to call it alerts and I'll use the basic HMI SCADA empty project and OK. Save the previous project I had open. Wait for the progress banner to complete. Project's now open so we can see the project tree. So the first port of call would be to set up some variables to generate alerts or alarms. So if we go into process connection, for simplicity I'm going to use internal variables. So this means the project is not connected to a PLC of any type, it's just internal tags. So if I go to tags, so I right click in this area to create a new tag. I'm going to use a boolean digital and I'll call it alert one and it's this means it's an internal variable the driver type there is not really anything else I need to set up there so I'm going to dupl duplicate that duplicate tag and then duplicate again so it's automatically naming them and then I'm going to create a different type of alert tag based on a number alert for num okay so I've basically created four variables internal tags now what I need to do is go into message processing messages and groups create message and I'll create alert one and I'll duplicate duplicate again and just re-edit the text so when you have an alarm or an alert you can define if you have to acknowledge it so if I go here, active, active state, I can have no confirmation. So I'll leave that one as no confirmation. The next one I'll have as confirmation and go. And the next one I'll have as confirmation. So you can see the three different types. So I'm creating the alerts. I now need to associate them with an actual tag. So if I go to trigger, that will be triggered by a bit going high BH if I just drag that across a bit more so you can see it okay so I now pick the tag so it's going to be alert 1 okay that's going to be a BH as well bit high and the one bit high and then pick the different alert tags Okay, so that's your most common type of alarm, just a bit going higher. Then we'll have a fourth one. Create message. Alert for num. So what I'm going to do this time is have no confirmation again, and I'm going to have a trigger, which will be BN16. So this is looking at a 16-bit integer or word. And I'm going to look at alert 4, which is a, a number. And I'm going to say when bit 0, so that's parameter 1. So of a number, I have a parameter 2. And I'm going to say when bit 0 goes high, it will generate that alert 4 number message. So as you can see, I've used two types of alert, a digital alert on a bit high and a numeric alert on a BN16. So I'm looking at 
a bit within a word. But if you look at the pull down, there are lots of options here. And I'm sure they're not obvious what they mean. So the simple way of finding out what they mean and what other functionality you've got is to go into file, help. And if I just search on BH, as in bit high, definition of messages, there's some information there. And if you keep scrolling down, there's more detailed explanation of what they mean. So hopefully that will answer your question regarding the different types of alarms you can generate. OK, I'll close that. Go back to the project. Continue. So the next stage is to look at the message view. And you've got various views here. So we look at default message list. Then you can filter it by which ones are active. So by default, you've got the type, the number, the registration time, the acknowledged time. There are others that I might want to add. So what I can do is go here and I can apply a filter. So I'm going to put another time. I'm sure there's another option. I can have time ended. So I'm going to tick that as well. So basically, in that default message view, if I disable the filter, you'll see that there are 31 different fields of information available to me. So I'm going to go with those five. So if you can imagine, this is going to view in like a table view, like an Excel chart. And these are the cell order. So cell 0 will be the type. Cell 1 will be the number. Cell 3 will be, 2 will be the reg time, etc. So I've got six columns, 0 to 5. I can edit them. So I think I'm going to click on that and say move to be the first. OK, so the first will be the text. Uh, the second will be the type, and then the number, and then the reg time, acknowledge time, and end time. So you can play around with those, and you can add other columns. It's really a bit of trial and error to see what are useful to you, or refer to the help files. Okay, so remembering the type I've picked, default message view, message list view, I then go to a page, and again for simplicity, I'm just going to do this in the start page. So I go to, so I need to display the information. So that is done with a grid. So going to picture editing tab, grid. Within the class, we need to pick the right attributes we want. So the attribute group I want to display, I actually want to display a message grid, not a data grid. So pick message grid. Remembering this is all being done in the class. So the only attributes are associated with this element, with this grid, are display and properties. So I OK that. Move that into position. Probably make it a lot bigger to fill the screen. So I can make it um, a thousand by... 600. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Double click into that again. There are some other features I want to set. Um, I'm just going to go into the class and say make all of these true. And again, to be honest with you, turn that last one off. It's a case of trial and error to see which of these you need to use. So we'll OK that. And let's just double click into it again and check. So within the class we need to go to view and we need to change that to default message view. 
if you remember, if you look here, these are the fields of information we want to view in our alert table, grid. So it's default message view, OK. And that gives you an idea of how it's going to look. We can OK that. And there you have it. That's what it's going to look like. That's just a, an example. To simulate the uh, alarms being generated, we can add some uh, tick boxes into the project. So if we scroll down the page, we've got some working area here. Go to Common Tools, sorry, Picture Editing, Checkbox. We can add one of those. And we just want the Attribute Properties Display and Input. So we can OK that. And it automatically drops it in the top left corner. We can drop that down to the bottom here. And in the instance, associate it with the first alert. OK. And then probably give it a label. So we go here, text fields, pull down, constant text, and drop it down. And again, it puts it at the top. Move that into position. And call that alert one. Okay, and then we can be lazy and we can copy, highlight both of those, make sure we've got them both. Control copy, control V. Move along a little bit. Okay, drop that down, control V. And then all we need to do is reassociate them with different alerts. So let's edit the text for a start. The label, alert 2, alert 3, OK. And then click into the properties of the actual button and make that alert 2. Now, because I know it's called alert 1, alert 2, I can literally just go there and type in alert 2. Or alternatively... I can click in here and I can drag that across a bit, and click in there and see the list of all the variables and then click it that way, whichever way it suits you. OK that. OK, so basically I can trigger each one of the alarms and then I also want a numeric display that I can edit to force the numeric alert. So numeric fields, digital number, I want to display, I want to be able to input, and I think that's all I need. So we can OK that. Again, it's dropped at the top, so we drag it into position. Give that a label as well. Again, be lazy, Control copy, Control v Alert 4. Num. OK, and I can double click in here. In the instance now, the unique instance, I have to point to the tag that I'm going to modify. So it will be alert for. And notice that um, because it's a numeric field, I'm trying to associate a tag with it. It will only display numeric field type tags. So it auto filters it to suit the type. OK that. I might want to put a tooltip. So alert num generated when bit 0 active. OK. What I should have done and I will do now is to optimize the resolution by going into the device configuration and I'll pick the default device or target default device being in laptop or PC the device I'm streaming to and I'll tick on these two options scale to full screen keep aspect ratio 
that way it will optimize it to suit my browser. Okay, so go back to project environment. Okay, select create. That will create a project called alerts. Notice the progress bar completed. Target system. Now notice it's automatically picked up this here. This is the name of my PC, so it's automatically done. If it didn't automatically done, sometimes it doesn't, you could either type in the IP address of the PC's browser or the name of the PC and then hit scan. But mine auto picked up. Okay, then go to online. And if you enter the password for streaming when you install Procon Web, you would enter it here. If you didn't, just hit OK. It's updated an existing project. OK. And now it's starting to get ready to stream. OK. Now stream, and that will send it to the browser. Open my browser. Point to that device. UK 1015, my PC, colon. 16700. That's important. That's the port number used by Procon Web to stream the project. So there's nothing active at the moment. So if I want to activate Alert 1, I just click here and there we have it. Um, the way Procon Web works, it automatically gives you this red box and you can define if you want it in which corner of your screen. And here you've got the alarm occurred, alarm number one, and it occurred just now. I can deactivate it and I can enable alarm two, alert two. And I can click on there and that's recording the acknowledgement time. And then I can deactivate it altogether. And then I can set up alert three. And again, acknowledge it. So because one was, they're all set slightly differently, if you remember, if I go back to messages and groups, I had the first one as no confirmation, and then the second one as confirmation and go, and the second one is just confirmation. So it's a bit of trial and error playing with them or referring to the help files to understand the differences between those different types. Confirmation being the same as acknowledgement. Go back to the browser view. And then this one here was set up so that, there you go, I've got the uh, tooltip alert number generated when bit zero is active. So if I just enter number one, there we go. And I can acknowledge it. So if I change that to number two, so two in binary would be one zero, that should mean the alarm doesn't occur. Yeah, you see? Hopefully that's explained the basics of how you create alerts or alarms and the alert viewer. Thank you.